Good afternoon, my name is Jeff. And I'm Andy. And this afternoon we're going to show you how to create claymation and stop motion animation. Uh, we're teachers in Alberta and this video is designed for a classroom context. The best background to use for stop motion is a clean table and if you put it up against a whiteboard then you have the opportunity to animate from the table up um, onto the board. We find that the best tripod is one of your school's music stands. Because the camera hangs just off the side, it hangs off the side, if you mount it like that, then the camera will see past there. Click on your stop motion and you can adjust accordingly. Wherever, wherever you want to situate the characters. We went with Stop Motion, uh, an app that we downloaded from the App Store because it was highly rated and has uh, some features that we really like. Um, we're going to use iMovie maybe later to add some music, but in the meantime, for the actual Stop Motion, we use Stop Motion. And Stop Motion was a free app um, with some good a few not really nice features that didn't cost too much money if you wanted to buy them um, some in-app purchases, uh, but by itself uh, you can do everything just free. One of the features that we really like is this one. Um, you got a little slider there on the left that is a transparency slide between the slide you're on and the, the, and the next frame that you're shooting. And so what this does is it allows you to see how big a jump you're making in between each frame. So all you have to do is shoot, you shoot a frame, and then as soon as you go to shoot another frame, um, it'll jump. And this allows you to make small adjustments or small um, transitions from one frame to the next, which makes your, your animation more believable. The smaller the space between, um, the smaller the movement in between each frame, the more believable the animation is. Um, if you jump, if you do a big jump, uh, it, it appears like a pretty big lurch in the, uh, in the animation and it kind of jolts us out when we go to watch it on the, um, the final product. The other great thing about this is that if you happen to bump your, um, if the tripod gets bumped or if one of the guys gets knocked over in some way, having this little transparency feature allows you to sort of center yourself and find it again. Um, if, if this guy gets knocked over or squished, you can work them back into the same spot pretty close and, uh, and that way you don't lose all the work that you've done because um, accidents happen. The single most important thing with making claymation or stop motion believable is that the camera itself doesn't move around. This is why we set it up on the, the music stand. There's a few different ways you can do this using the stands that come with the iPads will work or setting it up on a higher table. but. It's important that it's not just being handheld, the, uh, so that when the characters move, they're, as you can see in here, as they slowly move back and forth, um, all of the rest of the frame stays totally fixed. An important part of animation is the timing and spacing. The timing is the number of frames that it takes to get across the screen. Now, since we're doing stop motion, um, we're not too worried about the timing, we're just basically going to go straight ahead where each frame, we'll just add another frame, another frame. Uh, and however many frames it takes to get across the screen, that's fine. The spacing, however, is what's very important. Spacing is how far you move your character within, between each frame. So um, if we were to move the character evenly in each frame, you're going to have a constant speed. The character is going to move across in a constant speed. If you start out slowly, or rather keep the frames close together, overlapping at first and then getting further and further apart, you're going to have accelerating, uh, your character's going to accelerate, which is to say speeding up. And if you have start your character uh, moving across very quickly and then uh, lower the spacing, shorten the spacing between each frame, you're going to have decelerating or slowing down. You wanna practice getting in and getting out so that you can create as many frames as possible. Um, there can be a tendency for any animator to spend
spend too long fiddling with each individual frame, you've got to imagine that you're going to shoot, you know, 100 or 200 or 300 or, you know, if you want a several minute piece, over a thousand frames. And so we found that it's easiest if you have already storyboarded and planned the action that is going to take place. You've already, you built your character, you just set everything up and you essentially do it in one, in one sitting if possible. We just find that there are you know, little differences of light or a table gets bumped or any little distracting background changes. Um, they can happen if you shoot and then you come back the next day and, and try and sort of finish out the scene. Um, and so that practice of getting literally of whether you're using the timer or whether you have someone running uh, the camera of just getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out um, is, a, is a pretty essential skill and, and really will give you better satisfaction to have a longer, uh, like a longer film than to have each one exactly perfect. Stop motion animation is ideally done with groups of two to four. Um, and the most important thing is that you dedicate one person to run the camera so that there's only one person who's, who's pressing the button each time you're shooting a frame. The other people can reach in and manipulate the characters as necessary. So here's where, depending on what your, depending on what your storyline is you, and how many characters you have, you can have as many um, other people involved as, as, as is manageable. Uh, it's important that all of those people though, get their hands out of the camera in time because as you can see, uh, if you uh, accidentally take, take a, a frame with the hands in there, you're going to have to go back and delete that one. If you want to delete a frame, what you need to do is make sure that the frame you want to delete is selected, tap on it, and over here there's an icon that says delete. Uh, don't get confused with this one that says erase. Erase is something, it's a paid feature, but delete was the one that will delete the whole frame. The other great thing that, um, as we try to make this look a little bit more lifelike, it's important that we think about how the characters will move, um, uh, sort of how they'll wobble or, or twitch, I guess. Um, nothing really moves, you know, just hovering from one place to another without having little gestures of turning or in the case of this snowman it works really well if he wants to turn and we put the smallest little head movements in um, then he becomes more believable as a character this is true as well if we wanted him to uh, to take off he might if he was going to go forward he might actually lurch backwards first uh, so um, there's just small adjustments that you can make um, regarding the head or the body, um, given the body's little wobbles as, as they go, um, allows them to look, not look like they're just hovering across the, the field. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful and fun. If you create a video that you'd like to share, feel free to link it in the comment section. Thanks.